Over the last few years, I have used and reviewed countless batteries, solar panels, charge controllers, and especially inverters. So today I'm going to do a buyer's guide. I'm going to talk about the best 12 volt or even 24 volt equipment for any kind of system you're going to build, whether that's a small off-grid cabin, emergency power, or maybe you want to do a DIY power station. I'm going to talk about the best and most affordable, highest quality equipment you can get. So what do you even look for in an inverter? How would you tell a good inverter from a bad inverter? Well, before we get into that, you have to figure out what your needs are. Do you need 1200 watts? Do you need 2000 watts? Do you need 4000 watts? Before you buy anything, figure out what your load needs are. Now, back to how you decide. Well, there's a couple things to look for. Idle consumption. While it's on, but not doing anything, how much energy does it use? Load. If it says it's 1200 watts, can it actually do 1200 watts or will it die? Can it do it for an hour, two hours, three hours? These are things to look for. Efficiency. You take in DC energy, turn it into AC energy. Does it take 80% of it, 85% of it, 90% of it? The more efficient it is, the better. How quiet is it? How hot does it run? Is it burning hot? Are the fans a jet engine? Sine wave. These are all pure sine wave. But is it pure sine wave just on idle? You put a load to it, and does that sine wave get all crappy? So these are things to look for. A good inverter will have all of that. And on top of that, what's the price? Now, maybe it has all these things, but it's a $10,000 inverter. It's not going to do you any good. Well, this inverter here stands out because not only does it perform the best under all of those criteria I just mentioned, it is $89. It is the price of a cheap piece of junk inverter, and it is an incredibly well-made, high-quality inverter that does all of those criteria that I just mentioned. So this is the inverter that I would recommend for anybody who's building out a 12-volt system. Now you might say, well, it's 1,200 watts. I need 2,000 watts. Well, they make it 2,000 watt. Just figure out which model you want to buy. This is definitely the best way to go. Now this is 12-volt. Let's jump into 24-volt. 24 volt, same criteria. Load, noise, idle consumption, all that stuff's the same. This is the best 24 volt high frequency inverter that I've ever used. It's the big brother of this one, same company. They produce incredible equipment that is reasonably priced. Now I said high frequency, you might be thinking, wait a minute, what is all that, professor? There's two main types of inverters, high frequency and low frequency. These are all high frequency inverters and a good quality high frequency inverter will handle most applications well. But if you have specific needs, incredibly high loads like inductive loads, big air conditioners, big motors, you might want to look at a low frequency inverter. Now the downside to a low frequency inverter is they tend to be more expensive and they're a lot bigger and they're a lot heavier because they have a massive transformer in them. The best 24 volt low frequency inverter I've ever used by far is my 6,000 watt split phase Janitry Solar Beast. I love it. I've used it for almost four years now and I would highly recommend them except one problem. I don't think they're in business anymore. I've contacted them several times recently and nothing. The last thing I saw on YouTube was two years ago where they were talking about not being able to make them anymore. So I don't think they're available anymore. Their website's still around, but I just don't know. If anybody out there knows about Genetry Solar, if they're still around, let me know because they produce by far the best low frequency 24 volt inverter ever. So given that they may no longer be in business, I would recommend the Sun Gold Power 24 volt low frequency inverter. I've been using that one for several years now. It runs a lot of things in my house. It is bulletproof, it runs non-stop and I love it. It's 4,000 watt. If you need 6,000 watt, you can get 6,000 watt as well. It does generator start. It does AC in. It's a powerhouse. 240 volt split phase output. I would highly recommend the Sun Gold Power 4,000 or 6,000 watt pure sine wave low frequency inverter if that's what you need. So now to batteries. These are 12 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries. There is a range of quality and prices. Most of them are pretty good. There's a handful out there that I've tested that are junk that I'm not even going to talk about. But most of the batteries nowadays are pretty good. Vatter makes a really good one. Red Odeo makes a really good one. Lead Time, of course, makes a really good one. This one's really good. 
a lot of them that are really good, but one stands out head and shoulders above everything else. And that is this one, Truvelux. I just did a review of this one and it is just incredible. It was $162, I think, at the time of um, when I made the review. So that's probably in the neighborhood of what the price is. It has everything in it. It has an incredible Bluetooth app. It has low temperature protection. It has high temperature protection. It has overcurrent protection. Really has overcurrent protection. Doesn't have uh, just temperature protection like a lot of them do, and I won't mention names. This has pure overcurrent protection. The the efficiency and the capacity was amazing. I pulled well over capacity on this. It is this is a solid, solid, incredible battery that is by far my favorite battery out there, uh, just without a doubt. And the fact that it's priced lower than most, it's cheaper than both of these. So it's priced not at the bare bones. You can still get a cheap knockoff battery for less, but this is the best combination of quality and price out there and features bar none without a doubt it is the best one out there i've only reviewed a few 24 volt batteries so i don't have enough information to give a good recommendation on a pure 24 volt battery but you could take this battery put it in series and create a 24 volt or even a 48 volt system so you could use this battery in a 24 volt system very effectively so if you're looking for a battery look no further this is the battery to pick it's by far the best now to charge controllers. I'll just jump to the end. Victron is by far the best charge controller, but there's another one that's pretty good that I want to talk about. But there are a lot of charge controllers out there. I've used a lot of them that are cheap. This one does 12, 24, and 48. Uh, they're okay. Uh, most of them aren't even real MPP charge controllers. They're kind of pulse modulated. Uh, I just wouldn't recommend them. The only non-Victron that I would recommend is the Batteria. I recently did a Batteria review and it was really, really nice. Almost as good as the Victron. Its performance was excellent. It had great tracking, great analytics, uh, nice app. It was a really, really nice charge controller. But the Victron just steals the show. Uh, this is a 7515. It's a little on the small side. I would bump up to maybe the 130, but it is just an incredible charge controller. Uh, get the Smart Solar one. The app is just, nobody can touch it. The analytics, the tracking, the quality, the efficiency. Uh, Victron is the king. Uh, there's just no getting around it. The only thing I don't like about the Victron is on some of the smaller ones, like this one, these terminals are really, really small and they feel flimsy. So that's really my only complaint. But the Victron, I mean, for example, I can feel this teeny one weighs probably three times as much as this big one. So Victron is the clear winner in charge controllers with battery up being a surprisingly cost-effective backup so if you're on a budget and you're looking for more of a budget brand one that has a little bit more value to it look into the battery up. i was pleasantly surprised with how good they are and now we arrive at the final the solar panel the solar panel is really the key to your system because you are grabbing solar energy so if you don't have a good solar panel forget it nothing else matters and in solar panels there is a clear clear winner and I mean I have looked at tested and used countless solar panels rigid flexible bifacial type P type N big little poly mono blah 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 I have used and tested so many and there is one that is by far the winner that is the Cal Sun solar panel not even close it is by far the winner this solar panel will put out over rated power. This one specifically here is a 100 watt solar panel and it puts out consistently over 100, 102, 105 easily. And in the morning, it's already getting solar energy. So it doesn't have to be just at peak sun. Now this is a type N panel and it's great. They also make another one that's bifacial and it's half. So it's really good for shade tolerance. So if you have a shade problem, and there's shade on this, it doesn't kill your whole panel. This part will still produce. So they make several different models and they're all excellent. Calsun solar panels are amazing and they're inexpensive. So the value to what you get is just nobody's close to it. Calsun, and I bought this panel. I mean, nobody gave me this panel. I bought this panel myself 
And it's just, nobody's close. Nothing is close. If you're building a small solar setup, get a panel like this. And you know, if you're building 12, 24, or 48, it'll work. You just put them in series and parallel depending on what you want to build. But this is the way to go. Now, if you are building a massive setup, you know, you got five or 10,000 watts of solar, you will need to find a different panel. But if you're building a small setup, 1,000 watts, 2,000 watts or so of solar, this is the way to go. So I can't stress this enough. I've been so impressed with these panels. The value, the quality, the output, nobody can touch this panel. So for those of you building out a solar setup, let's recap what you need to buy. Jung Pao inverter. Size this properly. Remember, sizing is the most important part of doing your system because you got to get the equipment that's going to meet what you need. This is a 12 volt, 1200 watt pure sine wave high frequency inverter. If that meets your power needs, this is what you want to get. If you have more power needs, you want to bump up to the two or 3000. Victron charge controller. This is a 7515. Again, if your needs are bigger than that, bump up to the 130. If you're on a budget, Remember, battery is a good backup. Bam, get this. I mean, just get this. Um, get as many as you need. If you want 24, get two, put them in series. If you're building a 48 volt system, get four of them, put them in series. If you need a bunch of them, get a bunch of them, put them in parallel to whatever size you need. So this is the battery to get, regardless of what you're building, get this battery. Just get as many that meets your need. Again, with the solar panel, CalSun, get as many as you need. If you're building a 24 volt, you're going to need a couple in series. If you're building a 48 volt, you're going to need even more in series. Because remember, 48 volt is not 48 volt. You need to have solar input at least 60 volts coming in to charge up those batteries. So you're going to need, you know, four of these or so. But this is what you want to get. These four pieces of equipment are the best in the business. So if you're looking to build a small 12 volt solar setup, this is what you want to get. Now, if you want to build a 24 volt setup, remember, replace this one with its big brother, the 24 volt one. And if you want to build a 24 volt low frequency, just replace this with the Sun Gold Power. And that's it. If anybody has any questions, if you built out a system, love to hear your story. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to everyone soon.